Hello again, this is Dave with OC Astronomy. I've just got the um, Celestron Edge 1100HD telescope and CGX mount uh, set up and balanced. And I have it set up for visual use because the first thing I'm gonna do when I put it in the dome, um, when I move it upstairs, is do the initial sighting in, alignment, and polar alignment. Um, but after that, I'm going to remove this uh, diagonal and eyepiece and then set it up for photographic use. And so I wanted to show you what I'm going to, the accessories that I've got to, uh, to set it up for photography, my camera, and etc. I'm going to leave the finder scope on there. I think it'll be good if I have any troubles um, with any alignment procedure. I don't want to, I'm going to be all screwed together with, with the camera and I don't want to unscrew all the pieces. So I want to be able to have some way of telling me where is my telescope pointing. So I'll just leave the finder in place. Um, I'm going to be using an on, uh, off axis guider, so I won't have any separate guide scope. So I'll just use that finder as a, as a last resort if things get out of whack. Um, first off, I got these wonderful little gadgets. They are actually fans that replace these vents. The vents you can see inside have a very fine mesh and the mesh is to keep out dust particles and those vents are just passive so that as it's sitting out there um, the mirror will will try to stay the same temperature as the environment. And I'm sure that they're well designed and I'm sure that the venting is probably good enough. Um, I'm sure their engineers put some thought into how big those vents needed to be to keep the glass uh, thermally balanced. But this is a neat little thing. Um, the way it works, you take off the other vents and you put these in their place and then you drop this line very carefully. You drop it through the inside and connect up uh, those two for power and once you see where they're connected on the inside and then on the other one you connect up this line uh, that connects like so then you run that to a uh, 12 volt power source and I think I'm going to try to find a way to uh, tap it into a source that's on the same power switch as main power um, I don't know if I want to take off. I don't think I'm going to mess with the mount. I'm not going to take this off and try to connect it. I don't know. I might be able to get away with it because it looks like it attaches here and here. So I might be able to actually physically attach that to the power switch so that whenever power is on, the vents come on automatically. Um, I'll have to give that some thought though. It is a pretty nice long lead of wire that comes with them. So I think I could probably do it. Um, but remember, wherever the telescope points, that wire is going to have to reach from the vent down to there to be able to... I, I think it's long enough. Ah, I'm torn. Anyway, so I think that that'll help uh, balance out the heat. The next thing is these uh, wonderful little, uh, seemingly simple little devices that, that go on the tripod. Uh, they're little cups that the tripod rests in. Um, they're anti-vibration and what their job is, is to get any small vibrations from the floor and uh, keep them from affecting the scope. Or if the scope gets blown in the wind, it helps, um, it helps them balance out. I've had some good luck with similar ones from Orion on my pre previous telescope and they seem to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on there. Um, I think it's gonna be a better coupling to our, our deck upstairs on the roof. Our camera is the uh, SBIG um, uh, STF1100M, and uh, it's monochrome, obviously with the M, and then it has a color filter wheel, has eight filters in it, and um, it also has the uh, off-axis guider. You can see the pick-off mirror is there, and then it runs to the little nifty camera. Um, the camera serves as the auto guider, and I've had very good luck with that. With them all being screwed together, uh, all the pieces are going to be screwed together, so it kind of really eliminates the, the uh, problem with flexure. And the, it takes away one excuse, so I think it works well. The next thing is the uh, focuser. I've got 
the Moonlight Focuser with a ring attachment for the camera. Um, so the T-threads will, will go right onto there, and then this will, will go into here. Uh, it'll provide a rigid connection between the, the, the focuser. Um, also, the um, Moonlight makes a stepper motor, and it just attaches here, and you get precise alignment with your, uh, with your focusing. The, the last piece that couples to the actual telescope is this big guy here, the uh, reducer lens. It is not a reducer flattener because the Edge HD has hopefully flat optics, but it is a reducer. It takes you from F10 to F7, um, which will make photography faster and also give a wider field of view. So here's how it's gonna go. Camera screwed into the focuser tube. Focuser controlled by the stepper motor. Uh, focuser screwed into the reducer lens, and then the reducer lens screwed into this uh, this back here. So um, that'll all be rigidly coupled together. It'll be a stable system, I hope, and uh, it'll take away my excuses for not getting any good photos, that's for sure. Um, so anyway, that's how we're gonna set it up for visual uh, and photographic use. I don't really see me, um, once it's aligned and once it's set up for photography, I don't really see me going back to visual uh, unless I have to troubleshoot a problem. So I'm gonna probably wind up using this wonderful eyepiece and diagonal on a different telescope. Uh, thanks Celestron for sending it. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to use it once I set up, up for a camera. But, oh well, I guess some people will probably use it for visual. Um, anyway, that's a quick tour of how we're gonna set things up. And I hope you enjoyed. Thanks, this is Dave.